Hey guys, welcome to the final tutorial in the Godot random generation series. In this one, we'll be finally procedurally generating that dungeon I promised you guys, and we'll use what we learned in the past tutorials to do it. So, if you haven't already, I'd recommend watching those before we do this one. Anyways, let's build this dungeon. Okay guys, so the first thing we want to do is to try to find out how we are going to randomly generate dungeons and to look through the steps on how we are going to do it function-wise, variable-wise, and then also using the RNG class and shuffling arrays. So how I think we should do it is we should first probably choose the positions of where each room is going to be. So we need to locate the position of each room. So since we're going to locate the position of each room, this also means we need to know the number of rooms. So we can also make even one is find the number of rooms you want to generate. So now that we have this, we can also go to make the rooms after we locate them. So after we locate each position of each room, then we're going to want to generate the actual size of the room, which is actually right here in this function. So we'll write generate the size of each room. And then finally, we're going to want to connect the rooms using hallways. And there we have our instructions for what we want to do. So we know that we want to find the number of rooms. So we don't really need to find that. We can actually just make a variable for the number of rooms. No, we'll go, we'll call it room amount. And then we define it as an integer. And then we'll say our initial room amount is going to be five. So we're going to be generating five rooms. We're also going to want to keep the positions of the room. So we can make an array called room underscore positions. And then here we we'll define it as var. And then we can just make it an empty array for right now and then so the method that we're going to do to find the rooms is called langton's ant basically it's like just think of a blind man walking around a room he has no idea where he's going so he's going to go in a direction and then he's going to turn just to try to randomly find the exit so basically we're just having a blind guy just walk around a room randomly and like choosing different positions so what we're going to call that guy, we're going to call him the choosing position. Or actually, we can call it position chooser, because that's more, I guess, it sounds better for the actual task. And then we're going to define this as vector2. So now we have this. We're also going to want to have directions that the position chooser can go in. So we're going to make a constant array called directions. Basically, a constant just says this will not be able to be changed. So these are the directions that the position chooser will be able to walk in to determine each room position right here. So now that we have these variables set up, so what we can do is we can actually pass ready, then we can create a new function called room underscore gen right here, which has this. So this will generate a room. So now that we've made a function to do this, we're going to have to call this function so it'll be activated. So what we'll do is we'll do it for room and room amount. So this is basically saying we're going to call it five times. If you don't know about for loops, go check out the video before I explained a bit about them there. Um, but yeah, and then we'll just call room gen. So now we have called this function in the for loops. We are ready to start choosing the positions of each of them. So what we can do is we can make a function called choose underscore pause. So now that we have this function choose pause, we can pass that. We'll just call it shuffle. So now that we have this, let's make this a bit bigger. You guys can see. So we have function shuffle. And then basically what this function is going to do is it's going to take the directions and it's going to shuffle them so we can get a new direction every time the position chooser walks. So we'll go directions dot shuffle. 
It's not the best name for the function because this is also a function called shuffle, but it doesn't matter. And we'll go position underscore chooser. And then we'll go a vector two because the position chooser is defined as a position. And we'll go, let's say we should add the direction zero dot x. Remember that we have to do dot x because we're going to take the x coordinate of whatever direction is shown up here. These are vector twos. And then we'll do a comma directions zero dot y. Wait, it didn't go outside it. Okay, direction is zero, don't worry. So now we are going to be choosing a new position using the shuffle command. But we actually want to make a new variable up here, which can also be an x word bar, because we want to have distance between each room. So we'll go room distance, and then, because we don't want each room to be smushed together. That would be like kind of annoying, because they'll be right next to each other. We can have hallways where the player can walk through. So we'll make the room distance 10. So basically, this is what we're going to do right here, is we're going to multiply the directions by room distance. I'll bring this down here to make it easier to read. By room underscore distance. And then, so now that we have this distance between each room, we're basically just saying, instead of just having a normalized vector, like kind of go like through each room, we're going to have that multiplied by 20. So they're going to be further apart. So now we are going to start choosing the positions of our rooms. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give you a quick lowdown before I start typing out the code is that we're going to use this position chooser and for each time shuffle is ran, which it should be ran five times, it's going to append position chooser, which will be a different position each time to the room positions. And then we'll have five different room positions. So that's a very basic explanation. It's going to be a bit more complicated than that, but it should still be beginner friendly for people who are still learning Godot. So what we can do is we can call while true, and then we can say if position underscore chooser in room positions, which is a array that we declared up here, which basically stores the room positions, then we're going to say call shuffle. So this is like if this position that was chosen by shuffle is in room positions, then we can call it. We can call it again. Basically, this is going to avoid repetition in it. So we won't have like, like two rooms on top of each other at the same position. So we can say else if it's not in there and it's a new position, then we can call position and it will go room underscore positions dot append position underscore chooser. So we're now appending this position to our rooms because it is a new position that hasn't been chosen yet. We're also going to want to break it. So if we don't break the while loop, then this is going to keep going forever and it's going to append many positions and it's going to shuffle many times. So we're going to break, we're going to break that. And then yeah, so what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna we're gonna want to call choose underscore pause up here, and then basically now we're gonna be doing this five times for each room, so we'll get five different room positions. Okay, so what we can do to make sure that we're choosing positions right is we can actually just call choose pause. On for each room, and then on ready, we'll just print. Oh, I spelled that. We'll print room underscore position. So we're going to print the array of all the room positions, and we should get five different positions each time. So let's try it out. Yeah, so we got five different positions all right here that aren't the same. So nice. We can try it again. Yep. And we need to randomize the seed now because we are shuffling. So if you notice, this was the same as last time. So I forgot to randomize the seed. So one ready. We're just going to call randomize. And now we should get different positions each time that aren't the same. Yep, and we're getting different ones. Awesome. OK, so now that we've gotten the position sorted out for where each room will be, we can move on to our next step, which is generating each size of the room. So for this, we'll be using the function roomgen. 
So we can call room underscore gen for each room since this is in the for loop. So it's going to call this five times as along with this. So we're going to have the parameter room number and then we're going to pass in the integer room. So I'm just going to quickly define this as an int and then there. So you can define the parameter just like you define a variable up here as like a vector two or something. Yeah, so now that we're passing the room number, I'm going to show you why we're going to use this in a sec. So the reason why we're going to use this is because we don't want to generate every room just with like their separate width at the coordinate x and y, because this is always going to be at 0 plus x in width and y in height. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take which room it is and get that from the room positions array up here and then generate it at that position plus the width and the height for each block. So what we can do is we can go room underscore positions, and then we'll go room underscore number and then dot x plus x, because we want to keep the width that is being generated in here too. And then we're going to do the same thing for y. And the reason we are calling dot x on the array is because if you remember, the room positions inside of the array, each like variable inside of here or type is a vector two. So we need to call dot x because this is the x coordinate of this vector and dot y because this is the y coordinate of the vector. Oh, and I accidentally called it dot x. Don't follow that. So now that we have this here, we have a room generation set up and we should be able to generate a room from scratch. Okay, so let's test it out. And there we go. We have rooms being generated. But as you notice, some rooms are only having a width of one. So what we can do is we can actually make it so they have like a minimum of three. And let's give it like a maximum of eight. Actually, we'll go four and eight. So now we can try it. And the room should be more evenly. Yep, and we have it. So we have even rooms across here that are being generated in a random order. Nice job. Now all we have left to do is create hallways between each room. So as a challenge for this exercise, I want you to like think, maybe tinker with the actual script and try to generate a hallway yourself. So this is a pretty hard problem and I don't expect you to get it right. But if you do, congratulations. And if you don't, I will be showing you how to do it in a second. Okay, so if you're still with me for the final part of this tutorial on making hallways, then I'm gonna show you how to do it. So to make hallways, we're going to want to come down here to our choose position. Now, there are many ways that we can do this, but this is like out, out of the ones that I kind of like experimented with. This is 100% the most simplest way for beginners. So I'm going to show you how to do this one. So what we can do is we can do for block in room. This, it's going to be a bit confusing at first, but I'll show you how to do it after. We're going to call map set underscore so v because we can set it with a vector two position. Right now I'm just going to make an empty vector two, but we'll change that later. And then we're going to comma zero. We can first start by declaring in this set so v. We can start by declaring it as position chooser because this is going to be the position of the room of the current room that we are operating on. So now, since we know we are going to divert or inverse the direction, we can go times directions and then go zero. And then we can multiply that by vector two, negative one, comma, negative one. And then, so now that we have this in here, we can take out the placeholder vector. And now this is basically saying right here, we're going to inverse the direction like we were saying before. So now we yeah, have for blocking room distance, we're calling the same set so v at the same position. So we need to make it a bit different by adding block to it. So now that we added block to it, this is going to generate a line like we call like we discussed in the previous section. And then it's going to generate a line going backwards from the room. So we can try it out and it should do that. And it has. So we generated lines going back in the room. But as you see, in some cases, it won't work. And I'll show you that in a second once we get a case where it doesn't work. Yep, right there. So this one's generating downwards, which it shouldn't be because there is nothing down there. So the reason for this is that 
on the first like on the first room where there is no room behind it it's going to be generating one like going the direction that it came from which is not what we want so we want the first room to not have a hallway going backwards so what we can do is we can call if room underscore positions and then we go does not equal nothing then we can activate this four four block right here so now that we have this this is basically saying if there is a room behind it because we're appending this after it then it will generate one so we shouldn't get that problem anymore and yeah so the first one doesn't have a one generating behind it awesome so now we are going to make it so each room is centered so the hallways aren't on the side so to make each room centered what we're going to do is we're going to actually go back up into the room generation so right now we're generating a room where it takes the choosing position and then adds the x and y so on a chart this would be like below it in the fourth quadrant of a graphical plane uh, if if you would say room positions room number is the zero coordinate so what we need to do is we need to make sure it's generating the width and height as extent so what we can do is we can call this and then we can go minus width divided by two and then we can call minus height divided by two so this is basically saying that we're still going to be adding the same amount of like blocks to the height and the range it's just we're going to be centering it and if you do the math out in your head and you can see that how this actually works. So now we can go into here and it should be generating in the center. Perfect. So now we have completed our randomly generated dungeon. Okay, so as a special segment for those who have stuck around to the end, I'm gonna show you how to add thickness to your hallways. So if we run the program as it is, the hallways are too thin for these larger rooms that I've created. So what we can do is we can actually use a nested for loop discussed earlier, and we'll call this one block V in three. So the rooms will be three blocks thick. We can just go mount set so V, and then we can add a vector two. Oops, I didn't capitalize vector two. I'll go block V comma block V. So now what this should do is this should add thickness to our rooms and boom you can't see it because the camera's not zoomed out enough so i'll just quickly zoom this out go nine and then you should see that we have much thicker rooms and there we go thicker hallways and bigger rooms and this will allow for more space to like run around in your dungeon and yeah so thanks for watching guys i truly appreciate the support you guys have been giving me and um yeah i really can't thank you enough i hope you enjoyed the series and i might even put out another tutorial on a more organic looking generation rather than a dungeon room generation so if you want to see that stick around subscribe and i'll see you in the next one